friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a Q&A for you guys and I am super excited for this video. I am not in my normal setting as you can tell. From what I see on the screen right now, this bedroom looks so pretty and I wish I had this at home. I am right now in Palm Springs at like this like villa resort with Becca Cosmetics and it is so stunning in this room. Look at this beautiful um, like thing. What do you call this? I know Ikea has this and now I really want one. I think it's so romantic and pretty and there's a waterfall behind you guys so that's why you're hearing all that water sound. So I apologize if this video is annoying in one way or another for you whether it's lighting or sound. I am on a vacation right now um, slash kind of brand trip work but I wanted to make sure that a video goes up for you guys this weekend so I figured I would sit down and do a Q&A. I asked you guys on Twitter to send me questions and I got a lot of questions so let's go ahead and answer some of them and hang out for the next few minutes but don't forget to subscribe, like this video and comment down below because I love hearing from you guys and if one of the questions relates to your life maybe you can give us another perspective on it as well. I will see you in my next video. I love you so much. Enjoy this video. Can you please tell us about your high school experience and what kind of people you hung out with in your friend group? I hated high school to be honest with you guys. I grew up in a small town in Pennsylvania called York, Y-O-R-K, um, and it was, it was actually the first capital of the United States. So we had very like antique looking houses and like I believe like Thomas Jefferson was like buried there. It was a very small town. My class, my graduating class was 150 I believe. So it was pretty intimate. And um, in high school I had different friends every single year I guess because I never really found my clique. I never felt like I really fit in. Um, in eighth grade, I had, in eighth grade, which is part of middle school, before ninth grade is high school, eighth grade is middle school. I don't know why I'm explaining this to you guys. I feel like you would know. Um, in eighth grade, I had a suicidal attempt where I was going through um, pretty severe bullying at school. I went through months of depression and I had a um, suicide attempt and it was really really hard but I mean long story short there were just a few girls at my school that were very mean to me I ate, I ate lunch in the school bathroom I didn't talk to anybody I missed a lot of school so jumping into high school I was kind of known for that girl that almost killed herself and I guess people that's all people saw when they looked at me um, you know, but I mean, high school got better. I didn't love it, I didn't hate it, but now looking back, it was, I just felt like I could never find myself. I felt like I never really belonged. And I don't know if it was because I felt like I was different or I felt like there was more to the world than just that small town, you know? But I had one best friend in high school and her name was Brooke. And, oh well, I mean, you guys have met her. She's in my weekly vlogs. Uh, she actually just moved to LA, so it's it's great. We've been friends since seventh grade, and she's really helped me through thick and thin. So I'm very very grateful for her. But I mean, <laughs> I can tell you one thing. In high school, I tried so hard to fit in. I tried so hard to fit in with the popular girls. They had UGG boots, so I asked my mom to buy me three hundred dollar UGG boots. You know, they had designer bags. So for Christmas, my mom got me a Coach bag because Coach was in at the time. I tried extremely hard to fit in in high school and I think that's why now that I'm 23, I look back and I'm a very big advocate on being who you are and, and sorry, my camera shut off, but I was saying that I think that's why I am the person that I am today because I'm a huge person on being who you are and loving who you are and I feel like when you are exactly who you want to be, you will attract the right people. Is it hard for you to let go of any relationship friends and relationship wise? How do you cope best? Um, letting go is hard. It, it really is hard. And I always have the hardest time letting go of boyfriends because I, when I love someone, I love someone with all of my heart. I don't do that halfway shit. I, I love them with all of my heart. So when I was dating, it was really hard for me to go through breakups. I've never been the one to, well, I've been in two serious, two serious relationships in my whole life. And in those two, I was not the one who walked away. They were. So I've never, I don't know what it feels like to be in love with somebody and then realize it's not working for me and walk away because I've always had someone walk away from me. 
Um, and letting go has always been something that I had a problem with. But one thing that I've learned in the past few years that I've grown up, my last serious relationship with three was three years ago and he was so so toxic but I thank him so much because if it wasn't for him I wouldn't be the person that I am today and I, and I honestly can tell you I wouldn't ha I wouldn't be here doing this video for you um, it was because of that relationship that really molded me and taught me a lot and and made me grow as a person and made me want to live and experience life more and letting go is hard but I've learned that sometimes letting go means you're strong and it shows that you're able to suck it up and swallow your pride and walk away from something that you know is not good for you. And you know, letting go is kind of like jumping into a new chapter, entering a new door. It's not a win and it's not a loss. You're gonna learn something from it. Um, so letting go is hard, um, but I mean, you time changes a lot. Timing is everything. So coping, when it comes to coping, you just gotta let time do its thing, you know? It's it's always feel like it's never the end of the world. There's so much more to this beautiful world and this beautiful life. You just have to be patient and wait for it. Hi Kim, I just saw your post for a Q&A and I know you went through a rough breakup and I feel like my relationship is getting there. My boyfriend cheated on me with his ex. I should have known the signs where he would talk about his ex and I could tell when he thinks about her too. But the thing is that he was with her for two years and then he asked for a break between them. During that break between them, he started to talk to me and then two weeks into talking to me, he broke up with his ex-girlfriend and started to talk to me even more. A couple months into mine and his relationship, it was going well, but he never could stop mentioning his ex-girlfriend. And this weekend I went out of town for a funeral and he went to see his ex. I'm so hurt and confused and he hasn't spoken to me since 6.40 p.m. saying drop my house keys off when he when you can please. Like that's an obvious sign, right? I don't know what to do. I'm so lost and confused. Okay, so this kind of situation really, really sucks. And I feel like when we are so young, especially girls, because we can be a little bit more emotional and we overthink, but I definitely know some guys that are emotional and overthink as well. But I feel like as women, we invest a lot of our time and dedication into relationships and our boyfriends and girlfriends, you know? And I feel like reading your message, I there's a lot that I could say, but to make it short and sweet, I feel like I've learned that sometimes your gut feeling is always right and it sucks to feel like someone is losing feelings for you or vice versa. You might be losing feelings for them, but I also would take things one step at a time. One thing that I've learned is that I always made the mistake by jumping into conclusions. The older that I get, the more I realize that sometimes yeah, seeing his ex-girlfriend is uncomfortable, but is he really cheating if he sees his ex-girlfriend? And that's where communication comes into play. Do you guys communicate enough for you to trust him? Because um, I feel like if I had a boyfriend and, you know, he was very upfront with me, like, hey, babe, I'm, you know, I bumped into so-and-so and, -so and uh, we might grab lunch one day. How would you feel about that? And that's when you guys can sit down and express your feelings. And I also feel like there is some type of maybe um, the way, some type of, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but your mindset puts a lot of pressure on you because I feel like you're comparing your relationship to him and his ex-girlfriend. And the one thing I've learned is your relationship with him is your relationship. His relationship with his ex-girlfriend is his relationship with his ex-girlfriend. You know, I think I think that the message when I was reading it in the nicest way possible, I felt like there was a lot of assumptions. And sometimes assumptions can lead to misunderstandings and that's where the fire is lit. So I feel like the best way to deal with the situation is for you to sit him down and talk to him. Communication is key in every single relationship, whether it's between you and your parents, you and your siblings, friendships, relationships, marriages, communication is severely important. So I feel like that is the best route to go about it. Do you have any advice for improving makeup skills? I think my biggest advice is practice, practice, and practice. You never know what you are capable of until you practice. My skills were never at the level that they are now 
and I may never be at a higher level in the future if I don't continue practicing. Never be scared of makeup. I feel like makeup should be fun and it's an art, you know, it's a type of art and I feel like you should experiment with it and do what makes you happy. How do you exit a toxic friendship without making a big deal out of it, making it a bigger problem? I've actually gone through this recently and it's really hard because a friendship is like a good friendship, like a best friend is like family. And you know, blood is is thicker than water and you know, you don't have to be family to be blood. A lot of my best friends, I count as family and my family counts them as like a second sibling or my mom treats them as a second daughter or a son. And I feel like it's really, really hard, but if you have, you have to look at it, the friendship in a way where it's like, why is this toxic, you know? Like, are they being too negative? Are they a bad influence? Whatever it may be. I feel like, again, with relationships, communication is key. I feel like when you have enough respect for somebody, you'll communicate with them. And how they react to it and how they respond is completely their choice and up to them but you will always know that you're the bigger person by communicating. I feel like if people don't mean that much to you, it'll be easy to cut them off and that's where you can draw the line whether someone is important or not. I've had friendships where they were toxic and they didn't work out and sometimes you wanna try and try and try again and sometimes it doesn't work out. But then there are other times where maybe you just need a break, you know, in between you guys. You need a break away from each other to grow apart and you'll realize that maybe your friendship was really special. Hi Kim, I just wanna know how do you deal with negative people, especially those who hate or are mean to you? Well, here's the thing. I am a very sensitive person. I don't come off as it as sensitive because I feel like I've gone through a lot of shit in my life for me to build up this guard to not be sensitive. But one thing that I've changed about myself is you have a choice in everything in your life. You have a choice. You have to remember that is your happiness is a choice, your sadness is a choice, you wanna do your laundry, that's a choice, you wanna go to class, that's a choice. Everything in your life is a choice. And you have to be able to alter your perspective. There are two ways of looking at things when I get mean comments. There is the normal way where people are very upset and they wanna say something back and whatever it may be. And then there is this other way where you can look at it in a more, I guess, positive way, but it's not really too positive. Where when I look at people who leave me mean comments, I just think there must be something going on in their life that saddens them, that brings so much negativity that they have to go and leave such a mean and cruel comment. But I feel like a lot of people who do that on social media and do that behind a keyboard are dealing with something a little bit deeper than that comment itself. And I feel like in order to help those people, if you can't find positivity, be the positive aspect in the world. You guys know what I'm saying? So how do I deal with negative people? I don't deal with negative people. If I see a comment that's negative on my Instagram, my YouTube, my Twitter, whatever it is, I usually block or delete. And um, that's because I don't wanna see it and my followers who are positive also don't wanna see it. And one negative comment leads to a bunch of other negative comments because then you guys will just start fighting with each other. So I just, I just don't deal with negativity at all. Where do you see yourself in five years? Um, in five years, well, I'm 23 now, so 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Wow, 28. Um, when I'm 28, I really don't see myself married, but maybe in a serious relationship getting there. I'm not rushing on the marriage thing. I know that at that age, a lot of people are getting married, and I'm so happy for those people who are able to find true love. And who knows, maybe that can happen to me, because five years ago, I would never expect that I am here right now doing what I love. So I'm very, very optimistic about what will happen in five years. But whatever I'm doing, I hope that I'm happy doing it. And I hope that I'm changing people's lives and being a positive influence. And I don't know, I definitely, there's a goal that I've always had was to um, go to like a third world country or maybe like my home country in Vietnam and build like a foster care or um, kind of like a, like a building that people that, kids can go to to get free education and also provide um, jobs 
for people that can't find jobs. So maybe that's something I can accomplish in five years, but uh, we will see. I'm, I'm pretty optimistic about it though. If it wasn't for makeup, what would you see yourself doing? Um, I've always had this love for helping people. Um, that's why I think that's why I wanted to be a doctor because I figure if you're a doctor, you help a lot of people. Um, but I wasn't capable of that academically. I just was not dedicated or passionate. And I feel like doing what I do now on YouTube and Instagram, I'm not a superhero or anything. There are fire, firefighters and police officers out in the world and people fighting in the war and the army and in other countries and risking their lives for us. Those to me are heroes and they're they're the people that are changing lives. And But I feel like what I do on Instagram, YouTube and everything else, I feel like I'm bringing positivity to people's lives, if that makes sense. And so I feel like what I'm doing now is great. But if I wasn't doing YouTube, I feel like, I don't know, I would do something else. Uh, I don't know, volunteer my time around the world, something like that. I really don't know what I would be doing. <laughs> How do you remain so positive with everything you have going on? I struggle with that and watching you help me so much. Thank you so much. I stay positive because I know that there is a negative world out there. And I think a lot of the, a lot of what I get growing up is, um, Kim, you're so wise for your age. Even when I was like 15, I would get the, oh, you're so wise. And I think a lot of it has to do with my mom. She raised me to look at the world in a different way. I feel like life is all about perspective. If you guys, after watching this video, if you just try this for a week, look at things in different perspectives. Um, I don't know, like if you are applying for college this week and say you don't get accepted into your dream college, there are two ways that you can look at it. You have two perspectives, two attitudes. One, you can be severely upset and cry for days. Or two, you can take this as, hey, you know, I didn't get in, it's a sign, but I'm gonna be optimistic. I will apply again next year, or maybe I will settle for another college because maybe you'll go to your second choice and have the best college experience of your life. There's just two, two perspectives on everything, and the reason why I'm so positive about life is because I know that life holds a lot of beautiful things. You just have to be able to open your eyes and see those pretty things. And I also think that because recently, um, you know, I've gone through a loss of a, a friend from high school and he's brought a lot of light into my life that goes, hey, you know, Kim, like, life really is short. And another reason that I'm positive is because I, I'm i an influencer. I am on social media and that's what I do for a living and I see the negativity that the world has and if you can't find positivity, be the positivity. If you have the opportunity to see who you marry, where you live, basically your future, would you? I am that person that's very, very curious about everything. So I don't know if this sounds good or bad, but yes, I would totally do it. I am totally down. I need to know who the lucky guy is that gets to hear me grind my teeth every single night because I need to write him a letter right now and apologize way in advance. <laughs> What's the best and worst thing about being a YouTuber? The best thing about being a YouTuber, in my opinion, is my followers. Oh my god, you guys have no idea. My followers are amazing, you guys are great, I love you guys, I'm obsessed with you guys. I, I, I truly care about my followers like they are family. And I think that being able to share what you love to do and your passion with the world and having these thousands of people like talk to you every day and share that same passion it is so great and you guys are so uplifting like I don't know what I ever did to deserve such positive people um, you guys are so positive in the comment section you're so positive and uplifting no matter what I do and I just I love you guys so much now the worst thing about being a youtuber are all those negative trolls that I have to deal with every single day but I mean, at the end of the day, I don't really deal with them, but it just sucks to see that people can be so nasty behind a, a screen, like so nasty. If you had to choose between having your makeup or having internet con connection, what would you choose? I would choose having internet connection. I don't really need makeup. If you watch my weekly vlogs, you know I don't really wear makeup a lot, um, which is funny because I, I do makeup for a living, but yeah, I I like my face without makeup. If that looks, if that sounds weird, I I mean I, I slay with makeup, but I I also feel very comfortable without makeup. So I would choose internet connection. I need to be able to check Instagram. Three top restaurants to try. If you guys know me, you know that I'm a foodie. I love eating. It is my favorite thing in the world. 
love Jen. It's a Korean barbecue house on Beach Boulevard. I love Eight Pork Belly, on, also on Beach Boulevard, but down towards uh, Buena Park, like Whittier. And then my last one would have to be, um, I love Water Grill. It's a bougie restaurant, but they have really good seafood. As a student, it's so hard to struggle between school, work, and filming. How do you manage to do it? I get this question a lot, is how do I balance everything? And I think you guys really see in my weekly vlogs, I don't sleep. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a very hard worker and I feel like it's because I was raised by a, a very independent, strong, hardworking single mother of four. And so she, you know, she always taught me to work very hard for everything that I want in life. And I think that right now in this stage in my life, like in my early 20s, I want to work extremely hard so I can enjoy it later in my life and I feel like it, it, it has shown, you know, my, I feel like my hard work has shown so I will choose working over sleep sometimes, I mean I do get sleep, it's not a lot, sometimes it's like 4 hours, sometimes it's 10, it depends but I feel like when you have priorities you'll get them done. You have two choices, if it's important to you you'll do it, if it's not you'll make excuses, that's how it is. So balancing school, work, and YouTube is not an excuse because it's a priority to me. I'm not going to make excuses for what I want in life. How do you find time to film, edit, school, see friends and family, go to events and brand trips? Also, how did you learn to edit? I learned to edit by teaching myself. I also had a lot of help from Nikki, but I also YouTubed a lot of things. YouTube taught me how to edit uh, Instagram, I mean not Instagram, YouTube videos. And how do I make time? I like I said, you make, you make time for things that you love and that are important to you. If you take a step back and reevaluate your, your life, if someone means something to you, you'll make time for them. Busy is never an excuse. The only time that you are, actually there is no time. You can never be too busy for someone that you love and you can never be too busy for something that you are working hard towards because you really want it. What do your hometown friends say about your recent success? If some are negative, how do you deal with it? I don't talk to anybody from back home anymore that I grew up in. The only person I talk to is um, my best friend Brooke, but now she lives in LA. And honestly, I don't know anything because I, I don't really talk to anybody back home. So this 10 year reunion in five years will be pretty interesting. Okay friends, that is it for today's video. I'm so sorry. There are so many questions, but I could only get through a few. If you really like these type of videos, Comment down below and let me know so I can continue doing more so you guys can get one once in a while. I love you so much and um, I will see you in my next video. I'm going to go take some bomb ass selfies. I hope you have a beautiful weekend. I'll see you in my next video. Bye my lovies.